Hi there, my name's Greg Charest and I play the steel pan. Actually, I play an instrument called the double tenor pan, which is one of the members of the steel band family. I was talking to your music teacher, Mr. Hecker, and he told me that you had some questions about some of the things that I do. So I'm here to tell you the answers to your questions. Uh, Jacob has asked me, how did I arrange my music? Um, so I play these instruments right here, and even though it does not look like a piano, the instrument that I'm playing has many of the notes of the piano. So uh, most of the time when I'm thinking about what music that I would like to play, I often look to uh, see if there's piano music already written and I can read and play the piano music on my steel pan. It's not always that easy. Um, sometimes the notes of the piano are too high and too low, but mostly I can play the notes in the middle of the piano and that's always helpful. Sometimes uh, a melody could be written for a guitar instead of a piano or another instrument entirely. And so I have to use my knowledge of music to, uh, to rearrange or to rewrite the music for the steel pans. Um, many times I will play music that originally has a singer and will replace the singer with steel pans. So I have to also think about how high or how loud the singer's voice is and how that can relate to my instrument. That was a great question, Jacob. Quinn wants to know how they make the big dents in these drums. And so that's a really complicated process and a lot bigger of a topic than we have uh, time for today. But I can tell you that when you first look at these steel pans, they are, uh, they are con cave, which means that they are impressed. And some of the playing surfaces, these are called note panels, but the notes and where the notes come from are actually uh, convex. They come out of the, the drum. And so um, when they make this, they start out with a piece of steel that is almost flat. In fact, the traditional material that they use for these instruments is a barrel, an oil barrel, and the steel is flat. And they start with a hammer, a really big hammer. You might have heard of a sledgehammer before. And in the old days, they would take the sledgehammer and they would go around the barrel in circles, concentric circles. They all have the same middle. They're always thinking about this. And slowly over time, they would sink the pan into the shape of the bowl or the shape of a pan. Ultimately, when they are ready to start placing notes, they actually flip the instrument over and they start pushing out, pushing back out for these for these notes and it's a really long and complicated process but they use a computer to tune each one of these notes or to see how they tune it and basically they with smaller hammers very gently and very carefully hammer these instruments into place it's definitely worth a youtube search if you want to know more about that i'm not a builder of steel pans so i can't give you more expert information than that but thank you quinn for that question uh, Dahlia wanted to know how I learned to play the steel pan. And so the path for me is different than other people. In the culture of Trinidad, which is where steel pans were originally created, people grow up learning how to play the steel pan. It's an instrument that, that might actually be the first instrument they ever play. Um, I am a percussionist, which means I play lots of different instruments. I play the drum set, I play the timpani, I play the marimba, the vibraphone, the xylophone, the glockenspiel, and so many more instruments, lots of tiny instruments, big instruments. Uh, and when I, went to, uh, when I went to college, my college degree is in music education. I'm a music teacher by trade, and I also perform. When we become a music teacher, we still remain performers. And so uh, because I played percussion, which is when instruments are struck with sticks, I knew a lot about percussion already, and about seven or eight years ago, I decided that it was finally time for me to do something I'd always wanted to do, which was to play steel pans. So this is such a modern story, but I went on the internet and I found some used steel pans on eBay and I had them shipped to me from California. Uh, and then one note at a time, I learned where all the notes were. There was no one around here that could teach me how to play double tenor pan. And so I used my knowledge of music and all of the other instruments to teach myself how to play the steel pan. And that's, that's kind of my story. Um, while we're on the topic, uh, Violetta asked a question and she wanted to know uh, how I learned to play with four mallets. 
And I mentioned the instruments, the marimba and the vibraphone. And those are instruments where uh, a player will actually play more than one note at a time. In fact, up to four notes at a time. And so I hold my steel pan mallets just like a vibraphone or marimba player would hold their mallets. And so when I'm, uh, in fact, this might be interesting to you, I, you can see that I have two colors uh, of tape on the top of my mallets. Uh, and these are not traditional steel pan mallets, I'll say that quickly. Um, these mallets are actually a different length, they're a different height, but these are set up so that when they're comfortably inside my, my hand in the playing position, they appear to be the same length. And because of the way I'm holding these mallets in my hand, we might call this finger mechanics, I'm able to open them and to close them. Uh, and I'm at a point now where I don't really think about that anymore. I just kind of do it. If I know that I want to play G and E at the same time, I can do that very easily. And if I say G and B, which are very close together, I can do that without thinking my brain's able to, to make that happen. So this is a percussion technique that's not traditional to steel pan and comes from the marimba. And that comes from my training as a percussionist. And Violetta also asked, why I use two steel pans instead of just one pan. Um, Aaron's pan, Aaron is the other man in some of the videos that you've seen. Aaron plays what's called a single tenor pan or a lead pan. His pan is kind of like a violin. It's very high in pitch. He has many more notes than I have, very, very high in pitch. However, Aaron's pan has a low note of C lowest note that Aaron can play, but my pans, these are called, again, these are called the double tenor pans. My pans go from C down lower, from B to B flat, A, A flat, G, G flat, and my lowest note is F. Grenier's second grade class has some great questions here. I'm going to try and get through all of these. Isaiah wanted to know if I can change the sound my pans make. So these pans will always make this sound. The notes that are here are meant to stay here. Uh, in fact, if you look, this note right here is G. This G is the size of G. If it's smaller, it would only want to be an A, or it could be another note. This note is a B, which is a little bit smaller than G. In fact, this is G. This over here is A. And this over here is B. Each one is just ever so slightly smaller than the other. So the size of them corresponds to their actual note. I can't actually, I suppose I could change the notes or have them changed, but the reason why they're in the places that they are is because of their size and the way they fit together. Jayla wanted to know when I got my steel pans. This particular set of steel pans, uh, have been mine for, or have been with me for maybe three or four years. Um, I've been playing the steel pan for longer than that. These are a professional set of pans and they were made here in the United States and outside of uh, Philadelphia. And uh, these instruments were made for a friend of mine and he was no longer playing steel pan and so I was able to, to purchase them. Skylar wants to know how I play the steel pans. Well, the steel pan is an idiophone. When I strike it with something, it makes a sound. Um, my mallets have rubber tips, and in fact, this is kind of interesting. These tips are not made for steel drum mallets. These are actually pieces of latex rubber tubing, like you might use if you were making um, uh, lures for fishing, and you might also use it for tubing to connect water or in medical supplies, they use this quite a bit. Actually, that's where I get this. It's medical grade surgical tubing. Uh, and so anyway, this, uh, this rubber is soft. And when I take my, my mallet, my stick, and I strike the pan, the rubber kind of bounces off of the steel, which allows that note to make it sound. Um, if you're interested in this, these mallets are not traditional steel pan mallets. Normally they might be made out of light wood or, or bamboo. These are made out of carbon fiber and they were made just for me by a man whose name is Mallet Man. Mallet Man made these for me and um, they're hollow on the inside. They're very, very light in weight and they make a beautiful tone. 
Angel, Lila, and Mariah asked how I play with four sticks. So these sticks, which I should say are not traditional steel pan sticks, these are made out of carbon fiber and the tips are made out of latex rubber. These sticks, these mallets, um, are held in between my thumb and my pointer finger. And I make a, a pinch right down at the bottom here. In fact, you can see an extra piece of rubber here. This is just here in case I drop my stick. So it will bounce around the steel pen instead of damaging the instrument. That's all that's there for. But I hold that in my thumb and my pointer finger. That's pretty much it. The other mallet, which is longer, gets held between my middle finger and my ring finger and I hold this part of it down, this rubber stopper, I hold that down with my pinky and my ring finger. And so I essentially have, um, have two mallets gripping. One of them can move and the other one stays in place. And it's by sort of mentally measuring the distance between each of the two notes that I exercise my brain and move these mallets back and forth. And that's basically how I control these mallets. A few students, Elena and Isaiah, wanted to know when I started playing. I've been playing steel pan for seven or not quite eight years, almost eight years of my life. But I have been a professional musician for around 25 years. And I spent a lot of time playing drum set in different bands and also other percussion in orchestras and concert bands. Preston and Damani wanted to know how I learned to play the steel pan. Well, I have a lot of experience playing many percussion instruments, and because a lot of that knowledge is very similar, I was able to take what I already knew about percussion and apply it to a brand new instrument. What I had to do was I had to learn where all of these notes are, and so in the early part of my steel pan study, I, would, I had a chart, which I'll show you maybe on camera, and I took a Sharpie marker and I labeled every single note with Sharpie. After I labeled all the notes, um, I was able to practice and think about the patterns that they appeared in and eventually I was able to wipe away the Sharpie and now you can see I have everything memorized so I know where all my notes are. Uh, a few students wanted to know if steel pans are expensive. If you were going to buy a student steel pan, you would definitely pay close to or maybe a little bit more than $1,000. My instruments are professional instruments and they cost quite a bit more than that. Um, I, I could have bought a used car, a pretty nice used car, or I could have bought steel pans. So that price probably differs in, uh, in, in range. But um, if I was going to buy, uh, in fact, I've, I've just placed an order for brand new steel pans and a new set that will be even nicer than these, even more advanced with technology. And so those are many thousands of dollars, thousands and thousands of dollars for a brand new set of steel pans. Uh, Marcos wants to know what my steel pans are made out of. These are made out of, the material is steel, but originally these instruments were oil barrels. So the man who made these, his name is Kyle Dunleavy, Kyle Dunleavy, took a, a steel barrel and fashioned these with a hammer and probably a pneumatic hammer also, one that's powered by air, and was able to shape these out of steel using different kinds of hammers. Um, someone asked how old the steel pan is. These steel pans are about eight or nine, perhaps 10 years old. Uh, I don't I know exactly because they were owned by someone else before me. But the steel pan itself has only been around for about, uh, it's been less than 100 years. Really, the steel pan in its most modern form is around 50 or 60 years old. And something that's really neat about the steel drums is that steel pans is that they are still being innovated. There are still people who are changing the way steel pans are made and even changing the layout. In fact, I'm ordering some new instruments or I've actually just ordered a new instrument and my layout is going to be a radically different layout than this. The pans will actually be bigger in size and uh, it'll be a much different, uh, much different setup for me. So these are made out of old oil barrels oftentimes and newer and nicer professional instruments are made out of uh, just the most clean and wonderful high-grade steel. Okay, so defaults. 
first grade class had some questions for me and Melody wanted to know who my bandmate is. So of course, my name's Greg Sharast and my bandmate is Aaron Cody and Aaron plays uh, the single lead or the lead pan, sometimes also called a single tenor pan. It's a little bit strange that Aaron's instrument has so many names, but the truth is that the steel pan is so young that they still have not decided what the exact names are for the instrument and even for the things that we play the instrument with. Some people call these mallets, some people call them sticks, some people call them other things also. Uh, and so maybe after these instruments have been around for a little bit longer, we'll have some agreement. Anyway, <laughs> Aaron is one of my best friends and he's an excellent musician and uh, I'm gonna let him say hello to you. Hi Melody, thanks for asking about me. I'm Greg's bandmate, my name is Aaron Cody. I grew up in Jamestown, Rhode Island, and then I decided to go to school to be a musician because I loved it when I was a kid and I love it when I'm an adult. One of the things that I love about music is it's a vehicle to travel. It allows me to go places that I would never go and I get paid to do it, it's awesome. So I've been as far west as Hawaii, as far east as Turkey, and as far north as Canada, and as far south as Aruba, and the islands around there. So I got a job playing on a cruise ship. That's where I got introduced to Steel Pan. My instrument is a melody instrument and I get to play a lot of solos and a lot of melodies that people recognize. I have a lot of fun and I hope you chase your dreams down. Do what you wanna do if you wanna be a baseball player, an astronaut. Um, don't let people tell you you can't do that stuff. People do that stuff and that's why I'm a musician because people do that stuff. So. Have fun. Thanks, Aaron. So Alana asked how long it took me to learn how to play steel pan. And I wanted you to know that I've been playing steel pan for uh, not quite eight years, more than seven years. And um, I don't think I have finished learning how to play steel pan. So I think that uh, because I'm always looking for new ways to do something and always experimenting and trying different stickings and different patterns, learning how to shape uh, my chords and the way I make them sound, uh, I, I just don't think I'll ever stop learning. So I guess it's taken me almost eight years to get this far and I'm gonna keep going. That's a great question, thanks Alana. Santana asked how long it took to learn to play steel pan with four mallets. Um, it's kind of a not fair answer because I already played an instrument with four mallets before I played steel pan. Um, percussionists learn how to play instruments, for example, called the marimba or the vibraphone. And those instruments are often played with four mallets in your hand in the grip that I'm learning to play. There's actually more than one way to hold four mallets, but the, uh, the technique that I'm using is modified from a marimba technique. You can ask your music teacher about what the marimba is like and maybe about some players of marimba that would play with four mallets. Um, but on steel pan, this is kind of interesting that I've never played steel pan with two mallets ever in my entire eight years of playing the steel pan. I never wanted to play with two mallets. I always thought that the, the potential of this instrument was to play it with four mallets. And so I've made it my goal to only ever play steel pan with four mallets. Amaya wanted to know how I got so good, and that is really, uh, that makes me feel so good. So thank you for asking that question. That was a really nice way of saying that to me. Um, I practice a lot. I love to play music. Music can, music can make anyone happy, and um, I don't think making music is difficult. What I like about it is that it presents me with challenges and I love to, uh, to be creative about the way I solve those challenges. And that makes my, my brain and my heart very excited when I'm playing music. I feel so good uh, when I can solve those problems. And, um, and honestly, just by doing any activity, but for me, playing steel pan, doing it a lot makes me a lot better at it. And if you've ever ridden a bicycle or learned how to roller skate, or maybe you've played basketball, really any activity, skateboarding, 
any of those things, uh, the more you do it, the better you get at it. And so, Amaya, I um, have just spent a lot of time playing and trying to enjoy myself while I do it. Thanks for your question. Amaya asked another really great question, and she wanted to know how I focused on two, two drums, two pans, and four mallets. And the truth is that um, my, my set of steel pans, even though there are two pans, this is just one instrument. So when I look at this, uh, and I, you can see how big this is, my arms are almost stretched all the way out. I estimate that this is, I've never measured this before, but this is probably about four feet wide. Each of these pans is 22 inches. So the pans themselves are 44 inches, plus maybe one inch on the inside and maybe some extra room on the outside around where the hangers are. So let's say close to four feet wide. Uh, and what that really just means, Amaya, is that I can't, uh, I can't look at the whole instrument at one time. It, it is, it's two pans, but it's one instrument. Uh, unlike my bandmate Aaron, who plays one steel pan, he has lots of notes on, on one instrument, on one, one pan. Uh, but my instrument is built so that I may have to uh, look at both of the instruments. And in fact, I'd love to maybe make a follow-up video of this sometime where you can have the cameras focused on my eyes. For example, if I were to play an F major scale, if I'm looking for all the notes, you can see I'm really searching all around the pen. Now, I do have the ability to play those, that one was really soft. I do have the ability to play most of these notes without looking at the pan. Um, but that just comes from, from having played for a really long time. But uh, it is a lot of focus, and especially if I'm reading music like many musicians do, if I'm looking at a music stand, I will be looking at the music stand, and in my peripheral vision, the outside edge of my vision, I'll also be looking where I'm meant to play on the steel pan. Thanks for your question. Okay, Kissinger's second grade class. I have some questions here that I'd love to answer for you. Dimitri asked how I make different sounds on the steel pan. And so there are a lot of ways to answer that question, but what I'll tell you is that um, each of these um, ovals, really, in fact, all of the shapes here are ultimately just ovals. In fact, if you look at the smaller notes, it's very, very obvious. Which, uh, which shape these are. They're all ovals. The larger, these are called tone panels, if I didn't already say that. The larger panels often have an etching that makes them look like they're a trapezoid. But the truth is that if we look at, if you could be here really closely with me, if you could look at all of these notes, the actual shape of what you're looking at inside of the trapezoid, there is an oval for every single one of those. And um, when I strike, when I hit, and that after all is what makes a percussion instrument a percussion instrument, when I strike one of these tone panels, it makes a sound. Um, what's really awesome about the steel pan is that what you're actually hearing is not just one note, you're hearing other notes on the pan vibrate at the same time. The whole instrument actually vibrates when I strike it. And so if I were to put my hand on top of some of the other notes or in different areas of the instrument it sounds very very different so this instrument is all about um, vibrations moving throughout the entire instrument and that is one of the things that helps it get its unique sound Amelia wanted to know how I memorized where all of these note panels are and what their names are. When I first started playing steel pan, I took a Sharpie marker and I tested it first to make sure that it wouldn't stain my instrument permanently, but I took a Sharpie marker and I wrote down F and G and A and B flat and C, D, E and F and I would look at the instrument when I played and I would try to memorize where I saw everything. And of course, I also had a chart that showed me where all the notes were so I could plan ahead. But eventually, I just played enough steel pan. I played for so long. It took me about one year for this to happen. 
Um, but after one year of playing, so hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours of practicing, maybe even over a thousand hours of practicing to memorize where everything belongs. And um, then to make things maybe more interesting and more difficult, that was on an older set of steel pans. And this is a newer set to me. So I've, uh, I've owned more than one set of steel pans. And the notes are in a slightly different place on these instruments, which is kind of neat. So I had to a little bit relearn where all the notes belong. And um, soon I will be receiving a brand new set of steel pans and it's a totally new instrument. And so that instrument is gonna have note panels in completely different places. I'm literally going to start learning the steel pan over almost from scratch. So it took me a very long time to do that, but I really, I just practiced quite a bit. Linnea wants to know why I have two different drums, two different pans really, um, and that's because of their shape. They look, they look like pans. Uh, the reason there's two is that um, this instrument has many more notes on it that uh, are large than my bandmate Aaron. And if you were to look at a picture of his instrument, which is a lead pan, sometimes called a single tenor pan, um, you would see that most of the tone panels are small. My instrument has really large tone panels. And so because the panels are so big, they're big, that means they're low in pitch, which is wonderful. Uh, but because they're so large, they need more room. And so I have quite a lot of notes on my instrument. Uh, but because I have so many pitches that I, uh, that the instrument designer, who by the way, a man named Bertie Marshall originally designed these pans, the double tenors, uh, because he wanted to put so many notes on this pan and they were so big, he needed more than one instrument. If you have the spare time to research more about steel pans, there are instruments that have many more larger notes than just the double tenor pan. Uh, there is another instrument called the double seconds, which is very similar to the double tenor, has almost the same notes, um, but there are instruments called the cello pan. There's sometimes one called the triple cello. There's an instrument called the uh, triple cello has three pans instead of just two. Uh, there's the quadraphonic, which has four pans. Um, there are instruments called bass pans that are sometimes called six basses, and there are six pans. Actually, they're full barrels. They're really, really big. Uh, there's also eight basses, nine basses, and I've even heard of 12 basses before. So there are lots of uh, different instruments in the steel pan family, in the steel band, that, um, that have more than even just these two drums. What a great question. Uh, Ava is asking what I call these uh, and how uh, how they're constructed and what they're made out of. So in this, I call these mallets. Now in the steel pan world, some people call them sticks and other people call them even other things. But I think what's important to know is that no matter what we call them, they're pretty much mallets or sticks. They fulfill that function. Um, these particular mallets are special. They were made for me by a man who goes by the name Mallet Man. Mallet Man's awesome, and he made these mallets out of carbon fiber. They're hollow, so they're very, very lightweight, and they're also not normal steel pan mallets. I wanted, when I, um, when I was looking for mallets, I wrote to Mallet Man and I asked him if he would please tell me if he could make mallets that were a small diameter that I could fit between my fingers. Uh, and be comfortable there. And you can see that this is not so, it's not so bad. It's not very disruptive to my, my hand, my grip. And so um, anyway, these are much smaller in diameter than traditional steel pan mallets. If you've seen the Island Time steel band videos, you've seen that um, my band partner, Aaron, my bandmate, Aaron plays with bamboo mallets that are uh, much shorter in length than these of course made out of bamboo, and they also have a much uh, larger diameter. They're thicker around the edge. So this part is all carbon fiber. Now here's what's really cool. Uh, and this is many, many people do this. Uh, most people, in fact, do this. This is rubber surgical tubing. It's natural latex rubber, and um, it's literally just from a tube, and it just we just snip it right off and just take one little section of the tubing, uh, if you're wondering why there's tubing on both sides of the mallet, it's for two reasons. One is simply because if I were to drop this mallet, 
and there were not a piece of rubber at the end of it, it would clang and might damage my instrument. Carbon fiber is very hard and I would not want that to fall on my steel pans. Uh, but the other reason is that one side of this is one thickness and the other side is, a, is another thickness. So they do get a slightly different sound and if I needed to or I wanted to, I could flip them over to get a different texture out of them. Uh, but for the most part, I stick with the, uh, the tips that are close to the colored tapes on the end. And uh, if you're wondering this, I have two sets of mallets. My, my teal ones are one length and my orange mallets are another length all together. And that's because when I hold them in my hand in my special four mallet grip, um, when I hold them in place, they appear to be approximately the same length, but inside of my hand, it's because they just sit in a different place. So I have, have the mallets at the end like any other drummer, any other percussions would want their sticks to be the same length, but these are just slightly gamed for, uh, for better steel pan technique. Um, Ariana wanted to know about my technique. She wanted to know how I play. And so when I practice, I practice uh, two different kinds of playing. One of the kinds of playing I do is, uh, is chordal playing or playing chords. And so I might practice playing more than one or two or three notes at a time, up to four notes, obviously, because there are four sticks. And then another way that I will practice playing is practicing one note at a time and using all four sticks. Sometimes even find songs to play that use that same technique uh, within it and so then I would also practice um, the different sections of the song and how that would go together with what sticking I want to use. That's a great question. Thanks for asking that. Amelia wants to know how long I've been playing the steel pan. I've been playing the steel pan for a little bit less than eight years. Eight years. Um, mm, Many years ago, so approximately seven and a half years ago, I was playing professionally as a drum set player and, and teaching, of course. I'm also a music teacher. Uh, but I always wanted to play steel pan my whole entire life. Ever since I was a little boy, I saw the steel pans when I was a, when I was a child and I was really attracted to the sound of them. They make a sound that's unlike any other instrument and I always wanted to, to play them. So. Um, I had enough money and I had the permission of my family to spend the money on the instruments and so I did. And so here I am today. So about eight years in I've been playing the steel pan. I've been a musician though for much, much longer. Um, I was in the third grade when I started playing the piano and uh, when I was in fifth grade I joined the band at my school and uh, learned how to play percussion. I learned the glockenspiel and I learned the snare drum and from fifth grade all the way through today, which is, gosh, we're close to 30 years. That's a long time ago. Uh, I've been playing music on percussion instruments. Um, these drums are the same size. They're 22 inches across and Kaya wanted to know these, they seem the same size. They actually are Kaya, good eyes. So they're 22 inches uh, di diameter across in a straight line from the widest part to the, to the other side of that. And um, Kaya wanted to know how they make all these different sounds. Well, the truth is that after they take the flat piece of sheet metal of the steel and sink it with a big hammer, they then flip it back over and all of these note panels, these tone panels are pushed out from the other side as well and each of them gets tuned with a hammer. And um, if you ever get a chance to spend some time on YouTube and look up how a steel pan is tuned, you can see that the tuner will probably flip the pan over and onto its, uh, its correct side and then upside down over and over again to manipulate the pitch. But um, these, there's an organized pattern. There's a reason why these notes are in the order. It's really hard to explain. It's pretty complicated. Um, but they, um, they are tuned to specifically, for example, this is tuned to be a G. Uh, the tuner, my tuner's name is Chandler. Hey Chandler. Um, the tuner 
uh, knew that this is supposed to be a G. He looks at his computer. The computer listens to this on a microphone and tells him if it's in tune or not. And of course he uses his ears because he's Chandler and he's amazing. Um, our last question today comes from Aisha and uh, she wants to know how such little sticks make a, such a big sound. Um, some of it is, so this is a loud instrument. Some of it is that this is a very, very loud instrument. And if you were standing next to me and I was playing, you would be surprised at how loud I can play this instrument. I choose to play it at a moderate volume level uh, because I don't want to damage the instrument. But some of the magic, not to ruin the magic for you, but all of the videos that you've seen, um, I always have microphones right in front of me. Why don't you go back and watch one of those videos? And thanks, like and subscribe. Why don't you go back and watch one of those videos and look how close the microphones are to my steel pans. They're very, very close. So there is a microphone. You can just about see the stand of it right here. And the microphone is just off camera. So you can see uh, how close the microphone is and it does make an illusion of the instrument being so loud. But the pans do make a very big sound. Um, I have been performing more than once where a friend was coming to see me perform. And maybe I had already started and so they walked uh, up to me, but they wanted to know why I had my microphone turned up so loudly. I was playing outdoors and I actually said to that person, I said, I'm actually not using microphones at all. My, my instrument is not amplified. It's an acoustic instrument. It doesn't always need to be, but sound bounces off of things and it is a pretty big sounding instrument. So um, some of its big sound also comes from the, uh, the fact that it's made out of steel, which is very strong. The steel vibrates quite a bit. And also um, the edge of the instrument, which is called the skirt. The skirt. The skirt vibrates too. And so if I were to play this instrument and if there weren't a skirt on it, it would sound very different. But the skirt helps make it much, much louder. So special thanks to Mr. Hecker for having me answer these questions. I enjoyed this. Thank you so much for the opportunity to speak to your students. And I hope everyone has a great week. Bye, guys.